All right, there are four out of seven of us today, but that's a quorum, so we're going to have a meeting. And I'm actually hoping that we can keep this meeting moving along in a nice clip, because I'm feeling very holiday mood. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not quite what the holidays mean for me, no. but, <laughs> but um, so I think that it's possible that if we move along, we could get done by as early as five. So let's, let's set that as a goal. Uh, all right, so no public comments, and we have minutes. Motion to approve. Still reading. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Minutes have been approved. As we stand. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're already ahead of schedule. Um, <laughs> review the to-do list. That, uh, does anyone have any comments or thoughts about that? Um, in progress. Okay. And I actually forgot to put a, um, a quick update on anything regarding the Emerald Ash Borer on a, Do you want me to squeeze no, that I, in? We, nothing we, to report yet. Yeah. Okay. Okay, chair report. Um, I, some of this is on the agenda, so I'll save most of it for the, um, the agenda under planting plan subcommittee, but I will say that the subcommittee, I think, has met twice since our last meeting. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, um, and then I got to meet yesterday with Rich about it to just uh, get his feedback on it. And, and it, we, he had some really important feedback and we made some tweaks. And then I also had an opportunity since then to reach out to the Cooley Dickinson Hospital, which is one of our target sites for 2018. It would be um, one of our Arbor Day car target sites. And I, I quickly, I, I get quickly got in touch with the right person to talk to. And um, I, I, I'm gonna save most of this for the meeting, but it, there was a fascinating, realization that once again um, the planning department is, is um, <laughs> doesn't have trees on its radar in certain projects and there are plans to um, locate 12 um, bicycle uh, bike share pads throughout the city um, and one of them happens to be in front of Cooley Dick and that's how it came on my radar because um, basically where they want to put this pad is where we think there would oh. be a great place to put trees. Oh. Having said that, um, I think that, the, that we, we're getting in early enough that I think there's still an opportunity for trees to be integrated in this project, mm -hmm. but I did reinforce to Wayne once again mm -hmm. how this is an example where mm -hmm. looping us in at the earliest possible stage, even if it doesn't seem obvious <coughs> that trees should go in any particular bike pad for infrastructure whenever he thinks bike pad Structure, he, be, he should be thinking trees. So um, he was. He, he shared shared with me some information, and so forth that I'll I'll be happy to share later. But so I've had I've had conversations wow. um, in the last couple of weeks with the grounds person at CDH, with Wayne, with Rich, and with Molly Farlisher, actually who had a chance to weigh in on our planting plan and was very enthusiastic about it. So that's um, I think that's it for chair report. So I'll pass it to you, Rich. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, don't really have a lot to report. I'm going to be spending some time next week working on our Tree City USA um, growth award application, which will probably take about a day or two to, to finish 
show. Um, still working on a national grids list. I should hopefully finish that tomorrow for all the uh, trees they wanted to have removed on there. Um, Peter line, or the Peter route, which is on Spring Street, that goes up to Main Street and Leeds. Um, and uh, still plugging away at uh, trying to update Tree Keeper. Thank you. I haven't forgotten. Thank you. Mm -hmm. a Very much. A couple right snowstorms. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, it's quiet. No public shade tree hearings oh. happening. So. That's about it. Where was the tree that fell on Prospect Street? That was. Um, a, a big red maple. Yeah. Yeah. Just uprooted. Yeah. Just near. Yeah. 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 Right near a driveway and the sidewalk. Yeah. It yeah. was a private tree though. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's just good. Mm -hmm. Good thing it went the right way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm about. No, that was a tree on Trumbull Road that was on private property that I basically asked them politely that they've got 14 days to remove or else we'll do it. Is that whole corner private? Because that, I mean, that, that's the, that corner didn't have to take up like yeah. three or four trees. It is private. The stone bound is right on the back side of the sidewalk. Huh. Oh. So, but mm -hmm. again, you know, we could do some potential setback plans at some point there. But yeah, it would be nice because it is wide open yeah and there's no there's really no tree belt to speak of there so that's it okay um <coughs> can one of you either terry or you get me ned huntley's family's contact information no i sent terry the email okay so. okay good all right awesome okay wow moving right along did you have to speak in early no i sent it to you to right, early so start. planting plan subcommittee report all right, Molly, do you want to um, want to give it, and then I'll chime in on some of the, um, you know, the whatever I forget. <laughs> right. Well, also since yeah. since Rich and I um, talked since then, there's been since Rich and I okay, this is just that made a lot of sense. So they, all right, well, what I remember is we we went over um, Marilyn and I had previously walked um, Bridge Street to look at um, and inventory and photographed possible sites, but it turned Bridge, out Bridge Street, uh -huh. yeah. Mm -hmm. It turned out most of the ones we looked at were setback trees. And we realized that um, we probably weren't gonna have a lot of success with getting setback trees established there because a lot of those houses are um, rentals and it's hard to contact landlords and work with them when they're not there. Um, so we're, we realized that there's not really as many sites along Bridge Street as we thought that there would be. Um, so we expanded looking around to other possible sites, especially focusing on um, uh, gateway streets. So we went back and started looking at Con Street and started um, Con Street and also Pleasant Street and started looking, looking at Tree Keeper at all the vacant sites and writing all those down by address. And we're going to go back and actually look at those in person to see if they really are, look like they could really support a tree. But we added up, I don't know how many were more on that street, like 50 or something. 50 or so. About 50 more there. So we have some on Bridge Street. Oh, there's the section of Bridge Street that you did, like in front of the, from the post office up to the corner. There were some sites there. So we have a number there, and then we've got some sites on, um, on Pleasant Street. Not too many And what is the other, can you look at another street too? Yeah, we uh, we have looked at. Hold on a second. Let me get the other one. I'm sharing. So what I'm doing is I'm sharing a document with you guys. That was um, a previous one. That we yeah. we so um, we identified. So so there's a kind of a, there's four four parts to this plan. I actually have sort of the downtown one, which is the priority streets one. So we have four parts to this plan, and one of them is identifying priority corridors. And so we have Bridge Street, Pleasant. Um, south, the finishing up the list, little dribs and drabs of south, the moving those 12 trees that need to be moved. And then Bridge Road between Meadowbrook and the Rotary. And then the last one is Con Street. So those are our priority streets because they're main corridors. And then there's Arbor Day, Arbor Day Planting. And both of these, those would probably happen, actually, uh, well, those, you know, a lot of those would happen in the, in the spring. And then, um, and then, then there's um, neighborhood planting project. Remember that model? Did you all see? You're just getting that document. Is that what you're looking at? Okay. 
Yeah, and I've, you've probably got it too. Yeah. There's the neighborhood model, which is the um, planting uh, 25 per year of an identified neighborhood through an application process online. And then there's ad hoc requests, which are just people making requests online, and we try to, to try to distribute that evenly around the city by board. Um, and so what, what I realized with Rich, and talking with Rich Molly, mm -hmm. is I realized that um, we actually this year should regard the neighborhood and the ad hocs uh, as pilots so that we can in the fall have the application deadline for those particular things so that we're always ready in January to know mm -hmm. what trees we need to get. Because Rich was explaining that really January is, is the month mm -hmm. to make orders into nurseries. Oh. And that if, if we keep on like <laughs> trying to uh, fudge that any other way, we're always going to be left with crappy nursery stock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, one of the thoughts we had was um, to have a little control over the neighborhood planting this year to not actually put it out to the uh, to bid, so to speak, to the, to the whole community, but to target a, a, a specific neighborhood. And Rich and I brainstormed that that could possibly be the Orchard Street Elizabeth Lincoln. Lincoln's already, well, Lincoln. So Orchard Street Lincoln has 12 trees on it now, but right. could use more, I suppose. Okay, maybe a few more, but definitely Elizabeth lost a lot. And where is that? So that's right off of um, Rich Street. So it's across from oh, here. And, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. and the reason. <laughs> And the reason why that could be um, a potentially nice is it is a cut through. First of all, it's a cut through corridor from Bridge Street to North Street. Um, but it's we also have a pot of money to spend there <laughs> because I used to live on Orchard Street and 15 years ago, I raised $1,000 to plant on Orchard Street and then I couldn't get the city to allow me to plant anywhere. Oh. Um, and you know, new sheriff in town and new thoughts about maybe planting just on the other side of the Bridge Street Cemetery fence along Orchard Street, um, and anyway, there's like $750 to spend on trees there. And it's then, what, where's that money now? It's literally in, in an account in Florence Savings Bank under my name. Oh. Which I'm feeling increasingly uncomfortable about because I'm starting to apply for financial aid for my daughter for college. Mm -hmm. It's like these weird mm -hmm. accounts that I'm holding. Yeah. It was money that was raised by the Orchard Street neighbors? It was. Most of it was a donation from Seleucia Funeral Home. Oh. Mm -hmm. And um, and we did plant some of the trees, but some some of the money we just could not spend, and we didn't see the point in in spending the money. So it's just sat in an account. And every year I put a penny in, so they don't like you know, start closing my account now. Mm. So that's a thought. You know, Rich said or Elizabeth Street is. Um, yeah, we just cut a bunch of trees down. I would have about uh, half a dozen trees on Elizabeth, on Elizabeth Street. You know, the other thing too is that. It would tie into what we did our first year when we had our planting um, training with mm -hmm. the leaders mm -hmm. at, at Bridge Street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We did along North Street, and so we could actually just kind of go along the edge of Bridge Street going down Orchard, and then go down Orchard and then come back up Elizabeth uh, to try to tie Lincoln. Todd, I'm sharing this. I'll, I'll you know, have Lincoln tied in there as well. Mm -hmm. um, so you have basically like this giant block planting that's been done over the last three years be somewhat you know completed and then that also you think about it will tie in um what we've done on bridge street itself um where we planted a, a quite a number of trees on the easterly side of bridge street and the tree belt and also where we planted on bridge street in front of uh uh where the uh, antique center is mm -hmm. well and we're kind of should do so much more Right. No, but I mean, it just kind of makes it all kind of go in a circle. So you yeah. have this big giant block that we've planted that is centrally located at downtown. It's very walkable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, of course, I don't know that's what kind of just the location we came up with. But I think what Lily's alluding to is that this year, I think the commission really needs to drive the pilot program just so we can actually have the location selected so then we can reach More out for the, the correct stock. <laughs> and so the next fall, um, you know, we'll advertise, you know, somehow or another, we'll, we'll publicize this pilot program and then we're going to invite neighborhoods to actually apply mm -hmm. right. um, for this program. Mm -hmm. And the deadline would be November 1st, mm -hmm. which would give the commission a couple of months to, or maybe just a month to vet each application out and rank them based on their criteria that the commission sets for. And then come January, we have a list of 250 trees that we can uh, 
try to locate at uh, one nursery or multiple nurseries so we can enter into just one contract. Right. And not try to buy be buying trees for the fall in the middle of the summer, mm -hmm. right. which is going to be a struggle because a lot of the good nursery stock will be taken right. or earmarked already for other projects. So it'll eliminate running around, uh, I think, a lot, actually. It make, makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, there was a lot of running around last year. <laughs> yeah, there was. Yeah. And there was. And even, even, even when we had a contract with John, you know, some of the stock that John had a, uh, died, wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we had commitments with, uh, with folks that actually had setback trees, so we, we had to place them in something, plus we <coughs> Also had a commitment to plant, you know, up to 250 trees, which we did 248. So um, we failed. I, well, by, yeah, by two. <laughs> I can go plant two somewhere now. It goes around. <laughs> it's not over yet. I go week, but I, I, I just think it makes more sense, and then that way there we'll we'll have a we'll have a running list, and then we can, you know, the other thing too is I've talked to Lay about is, is potentially seeing if if it's. John would do it in procurement wise if we could actually um, contract with John over a long period of time, you know, five years. This is the owner of the uh, Yeah, industry. or someone like him, it doesn't have necessarily be him, but to have use trees that are in the grow back, grow mm -hmm. grow bag method, but find the available bare root stock to provide him with it. So he'll basically we're gonna say we want this tree grown and we will in five years' time we will harvest it from he will sell it to us at this price. Mm -hmm. Now, whether or not procurement-wise they'll allow us to actually have a contract the last five years, I mean, I, I, that's something I'm going to do a little research on. Right. But it would be in lieu of having our own nursery, but then it would really give us a chance to really diversify mm -hmm. our, our planting stock, potentially. But again, it's all, you have to start somewhere, and this yeah. is the place to start. So, yeah. that's, so, that's so, pilot, so piloting the neighborhood planting and also piloting the the ad, ad hoc online request. So what we do is we would, there is already a running list of requests for trees, a combination of, of uh, on the tree belt and setback trees. So we honor those this year, allow, if there's like 25 of them, we'd allow 25 more to come in and try to do some like opportunistic planting where, um, where we're matching, unideally un matching the trees we already have with the locations that are requested. But then going forward, we would try to get everybody to make, we, again, we, uh, it requires a lot of promotion on our part, to promote that we have this opportunity for people to request trees, and they do it online, and we take the first 50 by November 1st that come in, or, or and make sure that they're evenly distributed throughout the city, and then we stop, and then by January 1st, we know what to prepare for, what, what trees to work. But you're trying to, in this ad, in this, not this year, but in the future, you want like neighborhoods to apply, not so just 50 four, all over this. No, I, there's there's um, four there's four components to the planting plan. The first is um, identifying priority streets. Yep. Then the second is arboring, a, yep. a big arboring planting. Yep. Then the third is the neighborhood plantings where, where it's become it's an event. It's yep. like a 25 tree planting yep. day. And then yep. the fourth is ad hoc. Like anyone who says I want a tree okay. can put in a request online. And oh, I see, and they have to have it by November first. And we need to have yeah. that information. Oh, that's where I was confused. Yes, okay. or they just get waitlisted into the. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's not a, it's not a like you know you never you lost your chance. And what if it's a what if it's a setback tree? That's okay. I so think setbacks. Okay. Yeah, I think setbacks are fine. And I actually think setbacks are great in neighbor, the neighborhood planting model too. I, you but know, they setbacks still could somehow be in all of these. Sure, but they still have to sign the yeah. paper saying it's not there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So the other good news is that Molly Freilisher attended our subcommittee meeting, and she um, was very impressed with the thought that we're putting into this sort of planning. And she says it's highly fundable. So um, she, you know, she welcomed us to submit an application for planting uh, when this thing is, is ready to go. And so I think we can have it easily ready by, by September 1st, so we let our intent and then application. And um, I think the max we can hope for is a matching grant of up to 20,000. She said 30,000 is generally reserved for like those communities getting off the ground with a tree inventory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 20,000 tends to be the maximum that they give for just planting. But still, 
take it. Yeah. So. And does that have to be used in a year? Yeah. So we have to yes. spend forty thousand dollars. We get extension. You, 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 you got an extension for the right. the, the, the inventory. Okay. There is a set end time. Yeah. 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 But, but remember, some of that match can be um, can be income. It doesn't have to be money oh, to goes for trees. Oh, okay. So volunteer. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Promotional stuff. It's yep. pretty easy to make the okay. match. Okay. Have we gotten that money in the past? Not for tree planting. For the Just for the, for the inventory. Yeah. Yeah. How much does a year of tree planting? No, actually, we, we have we have done that in the past. We did it uh, for uh, where Parcel C or Elbert Field is. That, Little that, projects like yeah. Sheldonia. Yeah, Sheldonia, <laughs> and then that that you know that was like twelve thousand, and we did a match with all our labor and equipment and everything. Yeah, and then Heritage Tree Grant. We did. Yeah, Heritage Tree Grant. Mm -hmm. uh, there wasn't a match towards that, but and it was. Uh, well, there so was, but it just I invented a lot of things. Okay. Did well, you I, say that the twenty thousand from them <laughs> is? <laughs> <laughs> well, when I say that, no, actually, George Enterprise works for me, and there was some donated DPW labor too. Well, yeah, for all the brush cleaning up. And they clean up. Yeah, exactly. Right. The twenty thousand from DCR has to be matched with our twenty thousand. Yes, it's a one-to-one -one match. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> um, what else? She also said to. Oh, I, I see your hand. And I'll, I'll just sort of say one more thing. She also said that in addition to this, like four-point plan, and and by the way, the one, the first point, which is the ongoing list of priority streets, will always include five sites per year that are that involves hardscape removal. Like I think we should make that as a goal. Include hardscape removal. Yeah. Like where you're we're actually converting hardscape into a place for a tree. What's so that's, the percentage again? Five? I mean we're making this up as we go, Jay. So if you think it's outlandish. Whatever we determine. It's totally whatever we determine. Can hardscape our sub subcommittee said, hey let's let's look at let's have a goal of five per year. Could hardscape removal be like, okay, we're going to go to Pleasant Street, lift up four sidewalk blocks, excavate, put the totally. soil in. That's exactly the trick. What we need Florence. <laughs> What's that? Bike racks. Bike racks. Pull up the <laughs> Florence. Yeah. yeah. That's the only way we get stuff. Yeah. So happy to have your feedback. Um, I shared this with everybody with the opportunity to make comments, but you know it needs to be part of public record, so we. You know, we just have to make sure that that gets back to you, Terry, and that you publish it as part of public record. I, th I think it's great. Um, and I th the next steps would be to bring it up for like a full vote, basically, as our priorities for calendar year, whatever, 18. And then I recommend that we kind of formalize it in a one page document with perhaps even a stylized map of what we did 17, what the goals are, target areas for 18 are, and then share it not only obviously for PR related reasons, but share it with planning, DPW, et cetera, so they know there's no ifs, ands, and buts right. what the tree right. commission is focusing on. Well, I feel like the next step, given that this example of me just randomly contacting CDH and then finding out that planning was involved in their property, I feel like that could happen to any one of these streets that we're targeting. And so I feel like our next step is maybe a, a, a um, preliminary green light from the commission to say, I approve of these streets you're targeting, and then go to planning and say, these are the streets we'd like to work on. Is there anything that's going to, that's going to preclude us from doing that without you tearing it up in another few years, or can we piggyback on a project you're doing or something like that? Mm -hmm. um, so I'll just want to reiterate. The, the priority streets that we identified just for 2018, we're trying to get to the number 250, um, is Bridge Street, and that's from Hawley to Grant. <coughs> uh, Pleasant Street, that's pretty much from the state, where the state highway begins to uh, the intersection of Main Street. Um, South Street, this is just cleaning up the dribs and drabs, those 12 trees that need to be removed. Bridge Road, that's from Meadowbrook to the Roundabout. And then Con Street, Con Street is, there, uh, there aren't a lot of opportunities. The biggest opportunity on Con Street is in front of the Gazette. And that would require us to have a proposal to the Gazette. But it's such a prime spot that I feel like we should. And then I'm going to need to be, once we have those identified, I'm going to need to like farm some of this work out to the Jens and the Jays of the world 
to um, propose a plan to submit to CDH, to submit to Gazette, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, they're gonna want that kind of formality. Mm -hmm. right. So, okay, so that's, those are the priority streets on point one. Point two is Arbor Day. Those priorities are Cooley Dickinson Hospital. There's so much, okay, I can actually start talking about this now, my conversation with their grounds person. There's a tremendous amount of promise there. And one of them is, I don't know if you, if you can envision driving past Cooley Dickinson, you're driving past the parking lot and there's this big row of forsythia, hideous row of forsythia. Um, he suggested getting rid of all of that and um, yeah. planting oh, in shade. Yeah. The guy Yeah. Oh, I got to trim it oh, really? three or four times a year. Oh, yeah, he hates it, he thinks it's insipid, he thinks it's silly that it's blocking, that it's creating a visual barrier. And he'd much rather see um, shade trees that he can trim up so you can still see the hospital, but nice. then they offer shade. Yeah. Right. So and that's like a yeah. hill that goes down to the park. There's room there. There's room. Wow. Um, so. There's one issue, I don't know if it's the same people that were there before, but we did a huge planting there at one point. And we provided them with a, a maintenance plan, and they decided to not go with it and to do it themselves. Mm. And Is this everything you died. Oh, wow. Because they never watered them up. Was this Shumway? When you were working for Shumway? Uh, cotton, I think. Cotton. Okay. Huh. Okay, well, we mm -hmm. need to get in front of that. So we need to make sure that somebody's taking care of that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's too bad. So, Cooley Dickinson could very well take 25 trees. I mean, uh, when I look at, like, the tree belt also along Cooley Dickinson, if we're, gonna, we're willing to do some underwire, uh, there's a decent tree belt there. Um, yeah, so, but in addition to Cooley Dick, if we have, st uh, if we haven't reached our 25 trees, there's also Jackson Street School. And I, I was talking to Rich. I'd love to schedule to, um, um, an in-person meeting with the, the principal, Gwen Agna there, who I think is very progressive and is very probably very pro tree. But as you might remember, last year we dealt with the grounds people being. Um, hesitant about planting trees in certain spots that would be great for trees. Another spot that we haven't talked about at our meeting, but I noticed it when I was driving back from our meeting the other day, is on, I don't know if it's Elm Street at this point, but across from Child's Park, after you go by the high school, between the high school and the um, hospital, on the left side. What is that? What is that? Maybe it's Locust. I don't know. But on the left there, yeah. there's no wire on that side, and there's a big open space with a wide tree belt. Right, okay. That seems like we should check that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Child's Park or the other side? On the other side of Child's Park. Between the high school and the, and the and hospital. The so like where Murphy, like Murphy's Realtor yeah. mm -hmm. and some of those residential homes. Mm -hmm. We could potentially, wrap, that's close enough to Cooley Dick that we could wrap that be all in one, I know. All right, so, um, and then the third for Arbor Day, if we're really still looking to get to number two, 25 is Ryan Road Elementary School. Some of the trees we planted that were bare wood there did not survive. So plant a few more there. So that's those two, and then a neighborhood planting project, preliminary recommendation being Orchard Street and, and Elizabeth Street. And then the ad hoc, that's just, you know, whatever comes in. All right, so, um, Mull that over. If you have any other thoughts, please let us know. But I think we want to get great. want to get this really clear soon so that we can get an order in. And I'm definitely going to need to lean on folks. Like like all of these streets where we have used a combination of on the ground research reconnaissance and tree keeper. Like I'm not sure I trust any of it. Like I think that we're going to need to go back and be a lot more fine tooth in our combing for spots. So, um, would you two be willing to be part of that team? Yeah, yeah sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Would you like me now to kind of like assign you a, a street? Like, how would you like to do that? Because I'd love to start farming off some of this work. I feel like. So, so what? Give me specifically what you want. Well, I would say um, we have. So we have a running um, spreadsheet mm -hmm. of sites that we've identified and um, small, medium, and large trees that we think can go there. So I would say um, confirming those, adding or subtracting from them, correcting them. Do you have specific locations? We have specific locations on House a couple of streets. Yeah. We have it on Bridge Street, although we haven't finished Bridge Street. They're like, there's a whole part of it, like from 
um, from Pomeroy Terrace to Grant Avenue, which we haven't done. And then we've done it on all of Pleasant Street based only on My Tree Keeper, where it identified vacant spots. So you didn't physically go out and no. double check? No. And all your, you're not doing species, you're just doing small, medium, large? Yeah. Yeah. But you guys can absolutely start going on that level. Like, the, I think some of it is going to have to be like a dance between what the nursery stock of sure. Oh, of is. course. Yeah. So um, I'm just trying to think. I I think so far our priority this year, if we're going to try to stay laser focused and do one thing well, would be Bridge Street. Um, so I would say start with that especially because we've already done a fair amount of work there. Mm -hmm. And um, so we can share the spreadsheet with you. And then what I would probably recommend doing is um, either if you have a tablet you can take in the field or, or just print out our spreadsheet, take it, take it onto Bridge Street and correct it and then add to it. So. I think it would make sense mostly to stay, this is just my like thinking out loud right here right now to stay with small, medium, large recommendations. Uh -huh. And then it would not be hard to then look at the availability, availability and then match it with the um, data from the tree inventory. Like, mm -hmm. oh, we really need more of X, you know? Right. What do we have? What do we have a shortage of medium trees? Okay, right. let's throw forward and forward, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and I would also just ask you to keep in mind that goal that we have that, you know, Todd keeps reaffirming and I certainly would like to see of, of having there be some thought to like symmetry and um, some, some balance that makes it look like a unified, you know, piece. Mm -hmm. uh, especially if we're, if we're planting intensely and it's not as much like infill, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then then have something that, that looks like it wasn't just throwing all the random scraps in. I, I, I'm definitely much more of the let's intensely grow like, like um, a line of sycamores than stagger a million sycamores all throughout the city. That's my aesthetic. I, I think it's nice to put me on the spot to, to, to alternate small and big mm -hmm. and different size classes. Yeah two species. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind yeah. as you're, as you're, you know, you're I've seen that done really nicely in some spots. Yeah. All right, so. I, I can um, you, you send should, you that right now. I'll share it with you. And, yeah, Google Docs. and what we might do is at the end of the meeting, I'll, I'll walk you through it because it may not be as intuitive to you okay. as it may be to us. Okay. Okay, awesome. Anything else about this topic before we? Just yeah, making that. Yeah, I think it would be faster and easier. Yeah. yeah that would be a big help. That would be fun. Because I think we're going to start drowning under like this project if we if we right. just keep it in a subcommittee. Right. 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 Okay. No, that makes that makes sense. And also, we just I, I personally don't have the expertise, so I've got no business. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else? It says you don't have a Google account. So oh, I do, I do. do? Uh, it, I, I just don't use, it's my work email, so you can oh. use my work email. Oh, okay. Um, it's uh, J-A Werner, W-E-R-N-E-R. -E -E okay. How many times in your life have you had to spell your name? At gmail.com. <laughs> well, a lot of times it, it's an A. Uh, no, at stcc.edu, and it's a Google account. It's just under stcc.edu. Okay. Yeah, I need to get rid of that old email, but it gives me no spam, so. Okay. I mean, I get nothing, no spam at all. That's nice. Yeah, it's amazing. Wow. That's why I kept it so All right, so if there, are, if there are no objections to the streets that we're looking at, I would love to be empowered to go to Wayne Feiden and maybe you and I can have that conversation together and, um, and ask him if there's anything about those particular streets that we need to know about. Well, yes, they have a location of all the uh, bike, uh, the valley bike sharing. Yeah, do you want to share that with the commission? Sure, I'll forward it to all of you. Like the Rail Trail, Pleasant Street, Main Street Bridge, Historic Courthouse, Main yeah. Street. There's sites where bikes are going to be. <laughs> oh, the one in front? Yeah, east of the PDA bus shelter. 
Pulaski Park Main Street behind the PVTA bus shelter, John M. Green Hall, just west of the PV, PVTA bus shelter, Elm Street near Northampton High School, near the PVTA bus shelter, Locust Street at Pooley Dickinson Hospital, Mass Central Rail Trail at Kai Street, which is going to be yeah. on Bankland, Meadows Street at Lilly Library, mm -hmm. uh, Jackson Street, east side near Hampshire Heights, which is going to be probably in a tree belt, I think. Village Hill, west side of Village Hill Drive. I'm not sure where that is. Forbes Library off West Street near Children's Library entrance. YMCA, Massasoit Street. I'm not sure where that's going to be. State Street by the Mass Central Rail near Stop and Shop, which is in that little pocket park at the end of the mm -hmm. bike path. Um, those are the 14 locations. All right. Yeah. Share that with everybody because sure. he did indicate what, like, if there are tree opportunities. I haven't had a chance to read this very carefully. Is that an email that he sent you? Or? Uh, yeah, actually, um, yes, I'm going to share. Th okay, I see he didn't CC you on this, so I'm going to um, send it to everybody. Yeah, the only thing I haven't CC you about is about snow removal and who's going to clean up the snow and where the bikes are going to go in the winter. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Yeah, where are they going to put the bikes? They're, they're going to store them all because they can't. Oh. They're not going to rent them in the wintertime. Oh, they're going to put them away in the winter. Where? Huh. Is this a good time to pass around that little image you showed us? <laughs> you're probably going to email you know, the, the, the... Maybe they'll use that white building below the recycling center. I don't know. That building's going to get knocked down. Oh. Yeah, they cut that shred down. Yeah, they had to. The build, whole back of the building fell down. Oh. So well, they have to put up dual defenses to put a big fence uh -huh. around it. Yeah. Um, so so yeah. The email that... Um, that Wayne sent me has some thoughts about whether trees could be integrated in these. I have not read this. Yet. I just saw it come into my box. Mm. Oh, and Wayne was very clear that this project has the money for this narrow installation of the bike facility alone and not for trees. So he just wanted to make that clear. Okay. Um, should we move along? Uh, yes to me talking to Wayne? So empowered. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Todd said so to so. Um, traffic calming manual. Uh, so uh, we were not able to get on the agenda of the Traffic and Parking Commission, uh, but uh, we saved that for a future date. Uh, but I did uh, attend the meeting uh, and speak in their public comment period, and I shared the uh, comments uh, with the chair. Uh, and then uh, my comments were brief. I said, you know, we've met, we've been trying to integrate uh, uh, trees uh, into various uh, city departments plans, and we've been meeting with many of you who are at that meeting. Uh, police chief, uh, DPW chief, etc., um, and uh, that we uh, welcome the opportunity to share our comments with them and have a uh, robust discussion around the role that trees can play in traffic coming uh, when we are able to get on the agenda. Okay, great. That was about it. Great. Did you mention narrowing streets at all? No, I didn't get into the nitty gritty. I um, think that, you know. He said he would, uh, the chair said he would copy the comments and send them along so that when we do get on the agenda, hopefully we can have a discussion <coughs> based on an understanding of the comments. I see. Okay. All right. Thank you for doing that, Todd. And hopefully you'll be on the agenda in February. Yeah, I let him know my schedule as so. well. Oh, good. Okay. I'm glad to hear it. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. I know. I know. I'm sure the economics are there, especially in a town of this size. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Where we give bikes away for free anyway. Do we? Yeah. Where? Who? That'll people take some, cleans them up, and hands them to, to the people. Anyone who needs them. Oh, yeah. All right. Tree Northampton is not here to make a report. Does anyone have a third-hand report from Tree Northampton? One question that I would just, if we are going to um, put into um, like a documented format our tree our plantings and 17 priorities for 18, I'm curious as to the availability of that talented graphic artist oh, to help with Alicia? the uh, yeah, yeah. plan and just see if we could do it like a, like a simple stylized map of, you know, we did this corridor or we're, we're going to work on these areas and just so, so people can see how it's spreading out. I think she'd be happy to. 
I met with her a couple of uh, two weeks ago about the um, yard sign and the tree planting guide. So we tweaked the cover on the tree planting guide as to what the mayor would like to see on there, and then we finalized the yard sign. So those actually are right. gone to the printer. So the, the yard sign was for. Uh, uh, free trees to uh, free trees to good homes. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. That we kind of just kind of got lost in the shuffle. Oh, 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 oh. Right. Late last summer, early fall. So after we plant, if yeah. somebody's willing yeah. to, right? I yeah. see. Oh, that's cool. But it also can be, you know. Or it could be anybody. Could be I anybody. Could really. my, yeah. it on my on my own street property. Oh, yeah. I see. Oh, got it. Yeah. Okay, got it. Look out! Look out! Look Yeah. Uh, well, would you would you like or would you like me to reach out to Alicia and see if she? I, I can do it. I'd be more happy to. So that'll be a rich. No one's here. No one's here to take down our to dos. So. Well, we don't have anything to do after this. Meeting. Terry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? We're all done. <laughs> Buy bourbon for holiday. <laughs> do we have an under meeting scheduled? No, not yeah. for the end of the year. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Okay. Um. Plus, I think this is our second of the month, so we wouldn't anyway. This is the third Wednesday of the month. I'm talking about the subcommittee. Oh, no. I mean, so. No, I forgot to do that. Well, it was just it was any of me. Yeah. Nobody, no. but, but let's make sure that happens. Uh, okay. Um, any other business not anticipated by Moi? Um, I just wanted to follow up just what I said about the, the tree guide. So I'm having 100 tree guides printed. And then I'm having 100 yard signs printed. And the tree guides um, are going to be printed in such a way and bound so that we can unbind them and add mm. documentation yes. into the back, which Alicia oh. and I have been working on, which uh, talks about uh, tree protection. Um, volcano mulching? Volcano mulching. It's also going to have a section in there about uh, NGL Chapter 87. Oh, so I, she's basically I've given her a whole bunch of of uh, text with uh, mm -hmm. photos for each one of those things, and she's going to come sometime in January um, after her kids go back to school. I think she'll have time to work on it, okay. and then once those things are um, ready to be viewed, we'll review them, um, and if approved, we'll just take those hundred copies and just unbind them and put them in there. Um, and then I am once that's printed, though, I am going to send copies to the planning board and get uh, some, I want some feedback from them uh, about uh, taking that old planting list they have that uh, is in the uh, subdivision, subdivision right, out and place it in the street guide. That's an actual ordinance change, isn't it? Uh, it's, it's not the uh, subdivision. The rules are commercial right? district, the, some strings, the King Street Commercial District or whatever it's called, that would be an ordinance change. The subdivision rules and regs are just above the planning. That's kind of where we're at with that, so we'll be coming together. Good. So. Excellent. Well, we did good, folks. It's like 45 minutes. Okay, well, if there is no further um, business, then I'm going to um, ask you to do a personal inventory of your own to-do list. <laughs> I'd love to check in with you, too, mm -hmm. about um, about this spreadsheet. Yeah, we should look at that one. So. And, and just just know that we're on kind of a tight timeline because by February 1st, right? That's what I hear, yeah. Rich? We need to have all of these sites located. So, do our best. And um, I think that I'm looking for a motion to adjourn this meeting. So made. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, maybe it's adjourned.